It was a game changer for my type 2 diabetic patients when GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, plus another treatment which we'll go through shortly, burst onto the scene. We were able to get a lot of these patients off insulin and blood pressure medications, their weight came down and their energy levels skyrocketed. Then I started prescribing them to my overweight patients and the results were just as dramatic. Now these two medication classes seemed poised to offer yet another huge benefit and this time it's for those at risk for dementia. So let's start with an obvious question, who is at risk? Well, many more than you might think. A recent analysis updated older estimates. They're much higher than we'd previously thought. The analysis projects that up to 42% of Americans over the age of 55 will eventually develop dementia. This isn't confined to the US. Globally, the WHO reports that dementia is the seventh leading cause of death and a major cause for disability among older people. So in other words, dementia is incredibly common and with an aging population and the prevalence of risk factors like high blood pressure, it promises to get worse. And that's why the possibility that these common diabetic medications may lower our chances of getting dementia is a huge deal. So what's the connection here? How is treatment for diabetes linked to dementia? Well, we've already had evidence for a while that people with type 2 diabetes are at greater risk of decline in their mental functioning. That's because one of the main problems generated by type 2 diabetes is also causal drivers of dementia. So take, for example, the presence of chronic inflammation. This is part of type 2 diabetes. One of its effects is to accelerate the buildup of plaque inside our arteries. And the result is that people with type 2 diabetes have two to four times the risk of developing heart related diseases. As plaque accumulates, this restricts blood flow, and this can lead to brain cells not getting enough oxygen. This resulting damage starts to impair brain function, and this is one of the major drivers of dementia, and this particular form of dementia is called vascular dementia. The other most common form of dementia is Alzheimer's disease. It's also basically a matter of damage to brain cells, but the mechanism is different. Here, the damage is due to the accumulation of broken proteins around and inside neurons. This makes it hard for the neurons to communicate with each other. It also creates inflammation and can lead to neuron cell death. But despite years of research, we still aren't sure exactly why Alzheimer's disease develops in the way that it does, but we do know that it shares several important mechanisms with type 2 diabetes. They both involve cells losing the ability to respond properly to insulin, which regulates our blood sugar. They're also both marked with an increase in oxidative stress. This is when there's too many molecules called free radicals. These molecules cause cellular damage. They're like out-of-control cars on the road, crashing into other cars and buildings. Both type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's involve heightened levels of inflammation. So with type 2 diabetes sharing important dynamics with both forms of dementia, it makes sense that a treatment for type 2 diabetes could also help with dementia too. And when it comes to diabetes treatments, there are two classes in particular that are getting the most attention right now. The first is GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide, which goes by the brand name Ozempic. These medications mimic a hormone that regulates insulin. They were designed to help keep blood sugar levels within a healthy range, but it also turned out to be a powerful aid for weight loss. They help to slow down how quickly food moves through the stomach and makes us feel fuller for longer. They also act on receptors in the brain that control appetite. So there are several potential benefits here when it comes to dementia risks. Number one, GLP agonists, they increase insulin sensitivity and getting blood sugar levels under control helps to dampen down inflammation. This can help prevent plaque buildup in our arteries that we described a moment ago. In addition, GLP-1 agonists, they can cross the blood-brain barrier. Within the brain, they have an anti-inflammatory effect so they can combat oxidative stress. And the other type of medication for type 2 diabetes that we'll look at is called SGLT2 inhibitors. So here's how they work. Our kidneys constantly filter out our blood. Along with waste products, they remove glucose from the blood. And normally, a transporter called SGLT2 captures this glucose and puts it back into the bloodstream. The SGLT2 inhibitors blocks this action. So the glucose that's filtered out ends up in our urine instead of back in our blood. And basically, instead of getting recycled, the glucose gets thrown away. The result is lower blood sugar levels. Essentially, we're peeing out sugar. But there's emerging evidence that SGLT2 inhibitors might have additional impacts that protects our brain. They improve circulation in small blood vessels, for example, within the brain. And experiments have uncovered the ability to counter inflammation and oxidative stress. In short, 
Both GLP-1 agonists and SGLT2 inhibitors are effective treatments for type 2 diabetes that shows promise for addressing some of the causes of dementia. But does the clinical evidence actually back up this point? Well, let's look at GLP-1 agonists. An earlier study published in 2015 tested the effects on GLP-1 agonists like luraglutide in mice. They used a special type of mouse that models early-stage Alzheimer's disease, and after four months, luraglutide delayed or partially halted the memory decline that these mice see without treatment. After that promising result, the researchers looked at humans. They did a trial of 38 participants with Alzheimer's disease, and they divided them into two groups. One had placebo, and the other group had the treatment for 26 weeks. The treatment group Group again used luraglutide, and the key finding was that luraglutide maintained the brain's ability to use glucose. A decline in the brain's normal use of glucose is an important part of Alzheimer's progression, so this was an important result. Though the results of this study were exciting, however, the study group was small, and that's why another analysis came out in 2020 that was so important. So in it, the researchers looked at the data from the Rewind trial, which was a large study of diabetes patients. It included nearly 10,000 people and lasted for five years years. This study included two tests that measure cognitive function. They checked at the beginning of the study and at follow-up, and they were curious to see how treatment with dulaglutide, which is a GLP-1 agonist, to see if it would have any effect. And when they analysed the data, they found that the treatment reduced the risk of decline in brain function, as measured by these tests, by 14%. And a brand new study gives us the most important data to date. It examined nine years of health data from almost 100,000 patients with type 2 diabetes, but no prior diagnosis of of dementia. They isolated one subset of participants to compare the outcomes in those who were taking a GLP-1 agonist against those pursuing other treatments, and the outcome that they were looking at was a diagnosis of dementia. Those who took a GLP-1 agonist had a massive 33% lower risk of developing dementia compared to other treatments. But what about SGLT2 inhibitors? Well, here we don't have as much data and the picture is more complex. A meta-analysis published in 2024 examined three observational studies examining the link between SGLT2 inhibitors and the risk of dementia. And overall, they found that these medications were associated with a 38% lower risk of dementia. But there were some big differences between the individual studies. So for example, one of the three found no risk reduction at all. And that's why this new study of GLP-1 agonists that we looked at a moment ago is significant. Because researchers there, they also looked at SGLT2 inhibitor use as well. And what they found was encouraging. Those who used SGLT2 inhibitors had a 43% lower risk of dementia than those using other treatments. So at this point, the existing evidence is pretty compelling that GLP-1 agonists and SGLT2 inhibitors can have a significant impact on dementia risks. So far, it looks like these medications can help most when they're introduced early. But there is still a lot that we don't know. So most importantly, almost all of the research to date has been done in populations with type 2 diabetes. We don't yet know about the potential that these medications may have to help or slow down prevention more broadly to the population. Fortunately though, there are trials underway. So for example, the large Evoke and Evoke Plus trials are looking at the impact of semaglutide over three years in those with early stage Alzheimer's disease. And these trials should finish sometime in 2026. But in the meantime, SGLT2 inhibitors, they have demonstrated benefits in other areas too. So for example, I frequently prescribe them for my patients that have got chronic kidney disease or have got heart failure. There's also a blood pressure lowering effect, and most patients don't realize that blood pressure is linked to dementia risk too. So make sure to check out this next video here to find out how important this connection is and whether your current blood pressure is placing you at an elevated risk.